Hey everyone, welcome back to Mark Loeffler Experience. Today, and today only, we're gonna walk through 24 units in Toronto. And when I say walk through, I don't actually mean walk through, I mean I'm gonna walk through the numbers on what a 24 unit building looks like in Toronto. Is it a good deal? Now, would you buy 24 units at Keel and Lawrence in Toronto right now? I, I, I don't have that answer for you right yet, but I will in about 12 minutes at the end of this video. On this 24 units, which is two 12 units building side by each, as they would say, the asking price is 8.28, there we go, 8.28 million dollars. Now I'm just gonna say that I just bought a 90 unit in Edmonton for about $200,000 more than this. So if you're doing the math, that's about 66 more units. I don't know, but let's see, let's see what happens here. So in Toronto, to be honest with you, I'd probably expect to get about 60 to 65% financing uh, through a regular bank. So let's just do 60. So I'm putting down obviously a significant chunk. Out of the 24 units, there are, I believe it's 11 renovated units. And this is kind of where, my, well, my, one of my issues is it's renovated. I would rather them not be because they're not to my level. I like to come in and take down walls or at least create half walls or islands or something, put dishwashers in, put washer dryers in for each unit. And that's, that's just not the level that they've taken this to. Oh, we got to do land transfer tax here because we're in Ontario. Let's, uh, let's find out land transfer tax real quick. So the total land transfer on this, this can't be right. $324,150. Wow. All right, so again, we have $324,000, land transfer tax. So this essentially brings the purchase price up to above what I paid for that 90 unit in Alberta because, well, it's a tax. You can't get it back. You can't write it off. So I'd rather, I don't know who I'd rather give that to, but then the government. Anyways, looks like the government's going to get a nice payday when this thing sells. Uh, media repairs and renovations. So 11 units have been done. There's 13 more to do in this market. I'm probably going to spend about 50K per unit. So let's just call that another $650,000. Inspection. Probably going to get this inspected. Probably going to cost me about $2,500 for the two buildings and all the mechanicals. Appraisal is going to be about another $2,500. They do already have a uh, phase one environmental, but I probably will have to get that redone. So that's probably going to be to the tune of 5,000 plus financing costs, which in this scenario is probably not going to be that much. I'm probably going to use a schedule a bank, but you still got some fees in that. So let's call that about 20 grand on, on this right now. And then our lawyers, because they're going to re represent the bank as well, is going to be about $5,000. We're going to pay for the bank's lawyer. So we're gonna need about $4.3 million to buy this property. And then we come back here and we say, okay, well, what are we getting for 4.3 million? Well, we get 22 bedrooms, four one bedrooms, 12 garage stalls and 21 surface stalls. So that's a lot of parking. But let's see what the gross rent is today. Current rent roll, 35,882. Okay, so $430,000 annually. Just gonna say my 90 unit, more rent. Same price. Laundry income, are they getting any laundry income? Let's see here. Do, do, do. Yes, they're getting laundry income and it's $5,700 yearly. And this looks like an estimated number because nobody really knows their laundry income. It comes in in coins and they are not calculating that. Garage rental, that's what I was looking for. So they are renting that for $20,000 a year. Any other parking? Let's see, parking, parking, parking. No, because I would be doing at least $50 to, $50 to $75 per spot. Maybe that's just included in their rent at this time. Equals 20,736 divided by 12. So they're getting $1,700 a month 
in garage income right now. So again, about $457,000. If you guys want, we'll link down below. Last Monday, we did the video on the 90 unit. So if you're interested in comparing a Toronto property to an Alberta property, you can go watch those two videos. And if you haven't, definitely like and subscribe as always. We have about $26,000, $27,000 a month for hydro and water. And then we have property taxes, which to be honest with you, I thought would be more, but Toronto taxes has always been good. That's probably because they're making all their money on that land transfer tax, which is about 10 years worth of property taxes. Whew, it's pretty sweet. I mean, that's a good gig if you can get it. Uh, their, their insurance is actually decent too, at 80, about $8,300. So 5% for property management on a property like this, you can probably get a little bit better. You can probably get three and a half to 4%, but I'd like to overestimate. And as somebody pointed out, I didn't have a pest control number. I always put that into my repairs and maintenance costs because it's inevitable that I'm going to have to do pest control in every building that I ever buy. So they have repairs and maintenance at 21,600 and we're basically bang on management they have four percent salaries and benefits so they would have an on-site super i'm not a big fan of on-site supers i just pay cleaners to come in and clean the property which i'll put down to other and that's about 400 dollars a month so i'm using a two percent vacancy rate because in toronto there's very little vacancy and you can basically go ahead and get a tenant pretty much anytime you want so Let's see, What's, what are the mortgage rates on a commercial property right now? Let's just have a quick peek. So yeah, I mean, we're seeing right now, like they're saying 5.84, that's posted. So we're kind of seeing, I mean, five, 5.2. So let's use 5.2. So as is, this property is a 3.77 cap and it is negative cash flow forty seven hundred dollars a month so who the heck would ever and by the way that's with putting 40 percent down so on a property like this like i mean we might be 50 percent down let's just see how that changes the numbers and by the way i'm probably gonna i probably for the first year get an interest only mortgage so that's gonna help and or i'm gonna take a longer amortization which would also help. So if we come down here and we take a 30 year and we get a 5.2% mortgage, you know, we are cash flowing $3,400 a month right from the beginning. And we could probably get a little bit lower amortization. So if that's not the case, like if, if the case is that I'm buying this building, it's all right. Well, it's not going to cash flow great, for, especially for the money I have to put down. Like, let's be honest, our cash on cash return is, well, that's with a, a interest only mortgage. Let's just go to P&I, 0.33%. So it's minuscule. Your mortgage pay down is 1.62 and your appreciation, well, that's a 2%. So we might go a little higher here. Let's call it, let's call it three. I mean, it's a 6.78% return. So why the heck would anybody buy this building? Is that what you're asking yourself right now, right? I mean, that's what I ask myself sometimes. Well, number one, they are not really building more properties in Toronto. They are and they aren't, but they're not building them at a fast enough pace. So what's a $2,200 a month rent today could be in two years, three years, a $2,800 a month rent. And that's, I think, what people are kind of banking on but uh, let's just go ahead and have a quick perusal. And by the way, I do know other people getting 40 year AMS and doing CMHC mortgage on this, which would probably give you about 65% because it lowers the rate, longer the, lengthens the amortization. Well, let's just go through turning this building. All right, so we have 22 bedroom units. Now, their highest rent on a, on a two bedroom unit right now is $2,200. That does not include a dishwasher, doesn't include laundry, not as nice as I would make it. So when I turn this unit, I'm kind of expecting to get about 2,500 to 2,550 for a two bedroom. And times 20, and then we're gonna go plus. So we have four one bedroom units. And again, once I turn these, I'm fully expecting to get about 1,950 to $2,000 for a one bedroom unit in this area. 
So we just do that. So it goes from 430 annually to 630. So I don't know if you're doing the math, but that's probably a 43, 44% appreciation. I don't know. Do the math on that, guys. 635 to 430. It's about what 195, 198,000. I'm not 100% sure like what exactly was. So do the math. Tell me what what's that as a percentage. Do the math. Comment down below. So okay, I'm gonna get rid of laundry because that's gone, and I think parking is probably gonna probably stay the same. But uh, I might get a little bit like just inflation is gonna give me probably about two grand a month. I I will make this more efficient, but at the end of the day, I'm going to keep all the same numbers I had before, except you'll notice that now my cap rate is a 5.92. Just on a 90, on a 40 or 35 year amortization, my cash flow is $18,000 a month. I mean, it's still only a 10.24% return, but if I can go ahead to the, go to the bank and get this refinanced at even just a four and a half cap, so we'll, so again, to figure out that number, we take our net operating income, right? So if you're using my spreadsheet, if you're a part of the group, you go to H91, right? And then you just go ahead and, and divide it by the cap rate you want to use. So in this case, it's let's use a four and a half. So it's 0 0.045. We took this from 8.3 million to almost $11 million with a $650,000 renovation. So from a cost return basis from a renovation, you get good value for your dollar, right? You get very, very good value for your dollar and you know, you still cash flow. Okay. And I, you know, I would probably throw this into a CMHC mortgage. So let's just call this 60% and I'd probably go for a 35 or 40 year amortization and let's call that 4.5 for now. You know, so on a 35 year amortization, you're cash flowing about $8,500 and you're getting about a 9.62% return. But this is one of those assets that you buy and you just never sell. I know people who've owned stuff in Toronto and they were used to get $500 a month in rent and now for crappy units, they're getting two grand. Not crappy, but not as nice as I make them, which makes them crappy. Uh, but anyway, like, and on this building, they're $2,200 a month. I bet you this person who bought it probably was getting six, $700 a month in rent sometime. So $2,200 a month now is great. I do not see that slowing down. That is why I might consider buying this property. But guys, comment down below. Should I buy this? Should you buy it? What should we do with this building? All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're having a great Labor Day. We'll catch you next time.